Hi, everybody. How are you? So my title for today, the topic was the Asian symbolism of a swan. Not strange to you, but the other day I was reading the I Ching. And the I Ching is kind of like, I'd like to call it the Asian Bible. <laughs> uh, that's how I look at it, because it has a lot of lessons in there. I just find it really interesting. A lot of people think teaching, which is about life in general and how to. Hey, Jackie, <laughs> how are you? And I think of what reminds me of it. Actually, reminds me of the story of the ugly duckling. So that's my, I guess, imagery of a swan. That's what I think of. The ugly and it's an adult, and it's. This beautiful bird. Um, progress shape. And if you look, and that's how it's done. I mean, it's just funny. And then orderly progress, that's the order. But progress also means they live their lives in according to nate in according to nature, which means in the spring they're in a certain place and in the summer. So they move according to the seasons. They don't stay in the same place all year. Yeah, and the interesting thing about that was they had a list of things about swans. And it says, when a swan is by a cliff, that's a good sign. Why is that a good sign? Because if it's by a cliff, it can fly off over the cliff, and usually it's by water. So it's happy. But if a swan is on a plateau, that's a bad sign. And why is it a bad sign? Because on a plateau, you got to go for a long period of time before there's water. And swans need water. So for a swan, that kind of environment is not good. So for a swan, a plateau is bad feng shui. Okay? So that's what they're kind of trying to teach you. What's good for this particular animal or bird? Now, the other thing they talked about was a swan in a tree is a bad thing. Why? Because swans don't want to be in trees. So if a swan is in a tree, it's not a good sign. So if somebody tells you, oh, that's like a swan in a tree, that means uh -uh, that's not a good thing. So where does a swan want to be? It wants to be more on an open space. So they say the swan is better on a hill and probably because then it has you know enough space to take off and they fly very high very very high so those are kind of things so if a swan is on the hill and you see a swan on the hill that's a good thing that's a good sign and that's how Asian see symbols we don't it's a little bit different when you think about the ugly duckling because it's about the duckling's appearance but this isn't about the swan's appearance it's more about the swan's behaviors actions and characteristics and that's how they use symbolism a lot looking at those kind of things not so much of their appearance and then so they say when swans fly they fly very very high up and they're carefree there's nothing that could bother them and so they are also the symbol of a hermit, which means they don't care about what's going on the rest of the world. They do their own thing, and they're very happy doing their own thing. So it's kind of like you're carefree. So they say, be like a swan. Live according to nature. So when it's spring, you do certain things. In summer, you do, you know, so in spring, you sow your seeds. In summer, you're outside. In winter, you hibernate. And that's just, you're following nature's patterns. But obviously, it depends on where you live. You know, some places like near the equator, it's a little bit different. But in general, if you have four seasons, that's what you do. But the, look at the birds. They just go according to. You know, they go to the place where it fits their um, body and their instincts. So that's what feng shui is about, too. We have to go where it's best suited 
for us. Some people, like I asked a question the other day in the group, do you like mountains or do you like water? One is not better than the other. It's just that some people resonate with that energy, mountain energy, which is a more stable kind of energy. It's grounded. It's on land. And some people resonate with more water energy, which is more opportunity, wide open space, you know, movement. So it's just a different kind of energy, not saying one is better than the other. So what kind of energy do you resonate with? And there were some people who said they resonated with both. So they like the stable energy and they like that kind of energy that can go out into the world for opportunity. Which one are you? That's something you can think about. But I think ideally is actually to have both. Now, sometimes some of us, we can't be in an environment that has both. Hey, Mary. Um, sometimes you live in a desert. Sometimes you live on a plateau and there's no mountain and there's no water. There's just a lot of land. So when that's the case, you know, sometimes you have um, a stream running through, you know. So we use, for example, a stream on a flat plateau. That becomes kind of like your mountain. It's a little bit more stable because it supports the people who live there. You know, it's not the same as like an ocean or the sea or something like that. Different types of water have different kinds of energy. And also the size of the water can relate to the energy as well in an orderly fashion following nature. So that's something we can learn to look at nature to give us ideas. For example, another animal that I like the the um, in feng shui we use quite a lot, but also in Asian culture are tortoises. The tortoises are thought of as wise creatures, and they represent longevity. Well, longevity is because they believe tortoises live for three thousand years. Well, I don't think they live for three thousand years, but I think they in Hawaii. I know at the zoo that they said the tortoise was a hundred years old. So they don't move fast. They move very slowly, carefully, and they're very stable. And they can live a long time because they can go into their shell and they're protected. So when we get married in Asia, a lot of people who give you a gift, sometimes with a crane on it and a tortoise. So that's long life for both because they also believe that the crane lived for a thousand years. All these animals living for a thousand years. I don't know. I mean, a thousand must be a good number or something. So the tortoise, if you watch um, like Kung Fu Panda or any of the cane or the sword or, you know, that's the symbolism of they're wise because they've lived a long time and they will live a long time. So they have a lot of knowledge because over the years, they've just accumulated knowledge. They don't, we look to them. So if you move too much, really quickly, like they say, the fly, you know, just, and after so many days, bump, you did. <laughs> so they said it's better to kind of go slowly, carefully, cautiously, and you will live a long life. If you got to get it done, get it done, get it done, go, 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 go. Well, you may not live very long. That's what the Asians say. I don't know if that's true, but that's what they do. So I try and I'm trying to be live. Um, I don't know. If, and Thursday, I'm usually live with Justin. So please tune in about this time. I'm doing an Indiegogo fundraising campaign. For people who don't know what Forum School is, so I give a little bit of background on Forum School. Um, it's a good book for you if you're thinking about movie. It's considered good. And so if you need to change it, you can, you know, change the exterior. Not, but some of the things you can change. I know here we, I'm in the Pacific Northwest and cutting down a tree is not very easy because there's a lot of rules and regulations and it depends on the county you live in. Where I live, you can't go ahead and cut a tree. It's very restrictive. But 
a lot of times where I live, what I see is there's just too many tall trees. And what it does is it blocks the sun. You know, we need the vitamin D. And apparently because we're inside a lot because of COVID, we're not getting, check, check your supplement if it has vitamin D. And if you don't have enough, have some sun, go for a walk. Please do, because then it's better to get it naturally than from a pill. The best way, always, always. So, in say, in the olden days. So, in the olden days, like Dr. Zeus, when he was a young man, would come to the house, and he remembers his mother was sick, and it suited to her body. And then after, are you feeling better? And then he would adjust the earth. And then he told me that the only time this doctor got paid was if did that today in today's hospital. If we don't think so. But that's what they used to do in the olden days. You would only get paid if you cured somebody. That means they had to be really good, right? So they had to be reliable to make a living. So, I mean, I can't imagine that today, but I... Sorry, I went off topic again, but <laughs> like I always do. But anyway, okay, so that's all for today that I can think of. If you have any questions, a minute. So if I get questions, maybe we can stretch it for a half hour and then see. And don't forget to take your vitamin D and be like a swan. Okay, good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. And then we'll turn this off.